Welcome to Cisco Packet Tracer. In this lab, we're going to configure syslog, span, and SNMP. So, I have a few objectives. The first objective is to set up a network in the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. So let's get a PC. The PC will be connected to a switch. Let's get the 2960 switch. And the switch will be connected to the 2911 router. Um, let's also get a server for the syslog messages. Now, from PC to switch, we use a straight through copper cable. From switch to router, we use also a straight through cable. Keep in mind to connect it to the gigabit ethernet ports on both devices. From server to switch, we also use a straight through cable. Let's give this devices an IP address. With the PC, I'll give it a dot 10 address so 192.168.1.10 with a mask of 255.255.255.255.0 the switch I'll give it a dot 100 192 .168 8.1.100 As you can see, the link between the switch and the router is red because by default, the interfaces on the switch on the router is shut down. So let's go to the router CLI. Now This message is here by this message appears when you first boot your device. So give it the no command. Enable conf t interface g0 slash zero and the no shot no shot command to bring the interface up. As you can see, it's going green. Let's give this an IP address. IP address of 192.168.1.1. A uh, subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Let's test connectivity. So you go to the PC, desktop, command prompt, ping 192.168.1.100. I'm pinging the server now. So we have four replies, so we're successful. Ping 192.168.1.1. We're pinging the router. We have connectivity. So let's go back to the syslog messages. If we go on the router, you can see that we already have syslog messages. So this messages, you have to remember that the numbers, number five. So for the for your CCNA, Cisco will test you on the severity levels. You have to remember that zero is emergency, one is alert, two is critical, three is error, four is warning, five is notification, six is information, and seven is debug. But you can see that we don't have a time or a date of when this interface 
was up or when it went down so let's let's configure this exit and the command is service timestamp log date time msec service and you can use the question mark to see the command service timestamp log date time time msec now let's go to interface g0 slash 1 and give it a no shut command interface g0 slash 1 no shut and there you go we have the date and the time all right so this message is they can also be stored in a server or they can be stored on the device Think of RAM and NVRAM. If the device goes off, these messages will be lost. So it's always best practice to have a, a server. However, let's, let's configure the messages to be logged in the buffer. So, egg end. Conf t. And the command is login buffer. So this one, this one command allows the logs to be saved or stored in the buffer. NVRAM, RAM. Think of that. Okay. Next is to allow the size of bytes in the is to configure the size so let's go back to this to the router login buffer and if you use the question mark command you'll see so we're gonna extend the buffer to 8192 okay that's it and for us to save these logs into our server we use the login host and the server IP address. So login host and our server was 192.168.1.100 and that's it. And for you to look at this command, you do for you to look at the command, you can use the show login buffer. So let's now shut down the interface. Let's shut down zero slash one interface. Interface G zero slash one shut down. and no shot now if we go back to a, our server go to services syslog we should have the message so we have the time we have the host which is r1 and we have the severity level now as a network administrator, we need to be able to troubleshoot networks using tools like Wireshark or TCP dumps if you're on a Linux setup. So, um, okay, let's say you're in an enterprise environment 